welcome to my my garden swing <laughs> today we're going to talk about chronic illness a few of you have requested it and i make no um i don't hide the fact i've got brain fog something terrible today i don't hide the fact that i suffer with chronic illness i've got fibromyalgia and i've also got osteoarthritis and i'm not gonna lie guys he wipes me out. It's an absolute bugger. Well, both of them are, to be honest. And then how would my husband? He's got MS. So between us, yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> so I thought I would do... Oh, the angle here is awful. It's because I'm slouched. I've got the cushion behind me and I'm slouched on the uh, on the swing. As you can see, I'm moving around. Um, yesterday, we had a hospital appointment for Howard because... His MS is progressing and I mean we didn't do a lot of walking guys it was only the hospital and then back to the car and home but it wiped us both out by half past six he was asleep and yeah they just I was asleep on the sofa I just it's no life it is no life having chronic illness so from for those of you that are new I will start from the beginning for my existing subscribers and viewers, you're probably going to want to switch off because you've heard this so many times and it's going to be like a broken record. So, oh, and I don't always look like this either. This is a typical chronic illness day where I hide the eyes with the sunglasses, the hair goes up and I make no effort whatsoever. Just can't. I'm aching all over. So, right, how far back shall we go? Howard was diagnosed with MS in, he's got MS and he's also got pancreatitis. And I know the one diagnosis was 2010 and the other one, I think he had pancreatitis first. So that would have been about 2008. Yeah, he had pancreatitis first and then he had the MS, which is a bit of a bummer to be honest with you. I mean, two chronic illnesses as severe as that because they're, they're shit they're awful it's horrible to live with and it's horrible to watch him suffer he was walking wounded for a good few years but then his job was quite demanding and he ended up having to take early retirement because of the ms basically because he couldn't walk he was using walls to sort of bounce himself off bouncing from wall to wall so his job came with a house, which we also lost when he took early retirement or retirement due to ill health. We lost the house because of it. So hence where we're living now, we've been here about 10 years. So or nine years, something like that. So throughout all his illnesses and health battles and things, I was also battling something of my own but i didn't know why i had an inkling it might have been fibro because you google don't you well most of us women do <laughs> um yeah it was years and years and years of these little niggly things that i couldn't pinpoint um i might even delete this video before it goes up because the angle i'm sat is awful oh. is that better yeah, years and years and years of little niggling things that I just didn't know what was going on. I suffered terrible migraines. I had foot pain. Turns out it was plantar fasciitis, which is inflammation of the, the plantar muscle that runs, say there's your foot, it runs right along your foot, but I was having pain in my heel. And apparently that's quite common with um, fibro. Um, I had, God, I was forgetting my words, um, aches and pains and just general pain all over my body um, couldn't touch certain parts of my body because of the pain. I had digestive problems. I was diagnosed with irritable bowel, um, just no end of things guys and they went on and on for years and years and years 
Eventually, in 2015, I got a diagnosis of fibro. And yeah, it answered all my questions. Um, I was put on pregabalin, which I'm on now, and cocodamol. I'm on 30 stroke 500 of the cocodamol. I take six of them a day and I take 100 milligrams of pregabalin. So I take four of those a day, so 400 milligrams of pregabalin um, and various other medicines along with it, but they're the two main ones and they still don't help. I'm still in pain. I don't think they touch me. I think I need horse tranquilizers because nothing seems to touch my pain. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, I was still working with all this and then I started having knee problems um, and I'd had a massive fall in town. I wasn't drunk, it was daytime. Smashed my knee and it was ongoing from there. It would keep locking, it would, it felt like my knees were turning inside out or back to front, like a flamingo, you know? Um, and we've even questioned whether I've actually got hypermobile um, syndrome because both of my girls have. I've never like pushed for a diagnosis for that, but I'm not comfortable. See, I can never get comfortable either. I've never sort of pushed that, but I think I've probably got hypermobile syndrome as well. Um, so anyway, with the knees, I was back and forth the doctors. I've had injections, I've had x-rays, I've had scans, I've had MRIs. They eventually found that my meniscus, which is the cartilage, don't eat grass, Luna, you'll be ill, had torn and flipped over. And they called it a bucket tear or a bucket handle tear. So I saw the consultant and he said that he could help that by having me in and doing a repair of the meniscus, which I hadn't heard of. I didn't think you could repair meniscus or muscle or cartilage, cartilage, that's what it is. But he assured me that, yes, I'll be able to do it. I opted to have the two knees done together. Big mistake. I woke up from the operation to be told that basically they'd cut all the cartilage away and I'd been left bone on bone and I now had osteoarthritis and in his words, the worst case of osteoarthritis that we'd seen to be honest. He said my kneecaps thinned so much, one more fall and they're just going to smash. He told me I will need a knee replacement, well actually two knee replacements. But they don't do them here in Wales, at least. Or at least this is what he told me. He said, you can only have three in your lifetime. So we don't routinely do them until over the age of 65. So I said, well, what do I do? And he looked me up and down and he said, well, you could lose weight, which, yeah, I could. But there's a way of saying it, isn't there? I mean, he was really mean. He was horrible. Um with the two things that i've got losing weight is very difficult because i haven't got the mobility guys i haven't got strength i haven't got the mobility even on a good day i'm in pain so losing weight isn't as easy as it sounds i only eat one meal a day as it is perhaps i don't eat enough i don't know but one meal a day and yeah i do like a snack but i mean i'm not i mean snacks down my throat 24 7. It's just lack of mobility and um, I, I don't think I'm eating enough to be honest with you, but yeah, one meal a day. So fast forward, that was in 2016, I think I had my off or 2000, hang on, 2018, I had that off and it's been a steady progression ever since. I've now, I believe, got, I don't know if osteoarthritis can spread or whether that's rheumatoid arthritis, but I also think I've got it in my ankles, in my back, and also I'm having trouble with this wrist. Um, 
because I can't get up easily off the sofa and stuff, this Wednesday I got Howard to yank me up. And when he did, I think maybe, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to blame him unnecessarily, but maybe he twisted my wrist or something. Because ever since, yeah, I can do this, but it's really hurting. And it's more this side by here. And, ah, yeah, it really, it really hurts. So this side is fine. So I know it's not anything to do with my, um, oh my God, what's that thing my daughter had? My scaphoid. I know it's nothing to do with my scaphoid, but I think it is probably, I've, I've damaged something here. So yeah, I'm suffering with my wrist. I'm suffering with my ankles. My back is excruciating. So I do think maybe that's the progression of the arthritis as well. So, yeah, with my, going back to my fibro, there's only one way that you can be diagnosed with it, and that's to see a, coming up then, a consultant who will touch certain parts of your body and determining how you react from, hi, hi, you've been eating grass and now you're licking me. Hi, hi, this is Luna. <laughs> Hi. Determining how you react from being touched. There's a scale and there's seven points and I had pain in each of those seven points. So I was told that there was no doubt about it. I had fibromyalgia and the symptoms range from anything from the headache to toe ache <laughs> and everything in between. The pain is excruciating and when I have a really bad flare up or a really bad day, I can't move. So as I was saying, this is a bit bitty, I'm going back and forth. I'm sorry, I wish I could do a bump, bump, bump and, and, and keep it flowing, but I keep going back and forth. So from yesterday, I am absolutely wiped out. I am exhausted. All I want to do is sleep. Well, actually, all I want to do is cry. <laughs> Um, so I thought I'd sit out here and do, oh my God, when I shut my eyes, I'm really dizzy. I thought I would sit out here and do a health talk and just update you if you're new and you don't know much about me. I will show you how, uh, look how tired I look, guys. As I said, I do cover up my eyes because they look so awful, I don't want to scare you. <laughs> So yeah, I'm absolutely worn out and exhausted. She's my constant companion here, aren't you, darling? Don't worry, we are sat in the shade and she does have water. So yeah, I hope that's answered some questions for you all. Oh, my back. I know I'm not putting this on in case some of you want to say I'm putting it on and you know, if I'm that bad, how can I do my hauls? How can I do my videos and stuff? I have good days and bad guys. And as I said, even when I'm good, I'm still in pain. I just take a load of meds, paste a smile on my face and get on with it. I don't want to let um, chronic illness define me. I'm not chronic illness, you know? I mean, yeah, I have it, but I don't want it to define me. I am not known for my chronic illness. And when I'm good, you know I'm good because I'm happy, I'm smiley, I'm a friendly person. It's just when I'm feeling like this, not so much. So, yeah, changing the subject now, I am nearly, well, actually, last night I noticed that my sub count had gone to 1,980. So I'm only 20 subs away from my 2,000 which I really want to hit for no other reason, but for myself, you know, because I've been doing this for quite a while now, a couple of years. And yeah, I've got a bugbear that I just want to hit my 2000. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to anyone else, but it does to me. I want to know that I'm doing something right, you know? Oh, and for the other video the other day, was it? Yeah, it was yesterday's video. If you want a chance of um, 
get in that junk journal of mine. I had a lot of comments saying, you know, it was nice and you put lots of work in it and stuff. But that doesn't tell me if you want to be entered. So if you want to be entered to win it, comment me please or please enter me or something so that I know to enter you. Because I don't want to send it to you if you don't want it. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't really got much else to say. I'm just in a bad way today. No energy at all. I'm just glad it's a nice day so that I can sit out here. Anyway, guys, um, that's all from me for now. Um, I hope I haven't bored you too much. <laughs> I'll soon know by the sub count. <laughs> I'll know if I've bored you by how many people <laughs> leave. <laughs> I hope you don't, guys. I hope you don't. I genuinely do want to hit this 2000. And we all know there's trolls out there. So like I said, I genuinely do have chronic illness. And when you see me doing stuff, believe me, it still hurts. I'm still in pain. I'm still suffering. I just don't show it. Anyway, from me and her, <laughs> I want to say thanks for watching and uh, lots of love to you all. I hope you're all okay and I'll see you very soon, guys. Bye. Ooh, can't turn you off.